Hi guys, I'm Kristen. This is Kristen is Fully Booked, and today I want to talk about whether or not you should read Son of the Storm by Sui Davies Okubawa. Now this is a book that I saw on a lot of people's anticipated releases in 2021, but I didn't see that many reviews. And in fact, if you look, there are some, but I feel like the overall middling experience of a lot of reviewers prevented a lot of people from picking this book up in 2021, despite the anticipation that people had for this new West African inspired fantasy. So I wanted to take the opportunity to do another should you read style review for Son of the Storm. And I think that depending on what you are looking for going into this book, it's going to alter your experience of reading this book itself. This might in fact be a new hidden gem favorite for you. If there are certain things that you are looking for in a book, but it also might be a little bit more of a disappointing experience if you go into it with other certain expectations. Now the synopsis here is that we are following a scholar named Danso who lives in a world where the status quo, where order and caste and the ideal is extremely important to the society. Danso is someone of mixed heritage, which is not a great thing to be in this world, despite the fact that he is on track to become extremely successful if he continues on with his scholarly training and follows the steps of, you know, properness before him. He has never really been happy with what he has. Danzo is someone who really, really wants to know what else is out there. He wants something else, something different, and something that has not already been predestined or prescribed for him. The inciting event here is that Danzo happens to see a warrior who is not supposed to exist from another land using a magic that is not supposed to still exist. The city is called Bassa, and within this world there is a significant caste system that is largely based on the color of a person's skin. Here the darker your skin is, the closer that it is to godliness, I believe, based on the wording, and the lighter that your skin is, the further away or the less that you have of that class and caste systems are extremely important and the sense of this basso ideal which is like the perfection the status quo the ideal to which people are in this world are aiming for is extremely important the author did a really great job of giving you a sense of this vibrant rich culture in all of the aesthetic ways in the clothing in the jewels in the way that they do their hair the discussion of skin color everything like this was so well done, I thought, by the author, if a little bit heavy-handed in his discussion with skin color, but you have a really clear sense of what everything looks like and the rich vibrancy of this world. But you also have a really good sense of all of the flaws and cracks and faults and slightly disturbing control brainwashingness of this society as well. The control that the Basso government establishes through brainwashing, through storytelling is so clear and exemplified in the existence of our character Li Long, who is the warrior who is not supposed to exist. I generally think the author succeeded with world building, with the discussion of skin color and the importance of that a little bit hitting over the head in the repetitiveness of it. But despite the amount of time that we spent talking about skin color and the various different terms used to define different peoples, it actually remained pretty unclear if the terms were based on different ethnicities or cultural backgrounds, or if they were exclusively defined based on a person's skin tone. Jumping in to talk a little bit about the magic system here, I will say that this is a soft magic system. It is also a forbidden magic kind of system. And again, it's because within this world or within the Basso society, the rhetoric that the government extols is that this magic is not existent. It doesn't exist anymore. It didn't exist ever. It is a fable. And it is a fable, in fact, that they try to hide even the existence of from the average lay person. It has to do with these various stones. And when you are holding these various different stones, you can draw on the energy from the stone to have certain powers. And the powers are different depending on which color of the stone that you use. Some of them were elemental, but I forget generally the large extent of the details here. But it is a magic system with a cost. So when you draw on the power, it not only draws from the stone, but also draws from your physical body. So it talked about like when the people were using the magic, they would like suddenly lose teeth or they would get really tired. They, if you used too much, you would like become cachexic sort of, or as if you had been malnourished for weeks. And it is sort of a power hungry magic element. So despite the fact that within the Basso society, this magic is not supposed to exist. It is something that they keep 
the knowledge of or awareness from like 99.9% .9 of their population, when it begins to come into play, it definitely becomes a little, a little bit of a power hunger source where people deny the presence and vilify the existence of, or the use of this magic, but they also desperately want to get access to it. Talking for a moment a little bit about the character. So Danso is our main character, but we do get POVs from several different characters as well, some of them more so than others. We'd get Danso a lot. We also get the perspective of his intended Eshime, who is a very challenging character to read about. If you like the character Kenneth in the Live Ship Trader series, or if you like to read Kenneth's perspective, then Eshime is very similar, where she is someone who is very much so out for herself. She is very controlling, and she reads a little bit as if she is a little bit of a sociopath or a psychopath where she doesn't seem to care for anyone around her other than how she will use them to get the greatness and power that she demands and needs. She also has a little bit of an anger problem. She's a pretty disturbing character to read about, to be honest, but she also provided some very interesting chapters and viewpoints. Now, Danzo is our main main character, I guess, and I mentioned before that he is of mixed heritage, so he is not as dark-skinned as the highest caste system here or the elite, even though he has a little bit of access to that because of his role as this scholar. Despite all of this, he is still very much so treated as other, and there is a lot of prejudice and harassment against him over the course of the book for his heritage, for who he is. Unfortunately, Danzo can really only see the problems of the Basso society or the Basso ideal as they relate to him. And he seems not to think about the problems within the system at large, unless they relate again directly to him or to someone that he is really close with. When given evidence to the contrary or to larger problems within his world or within his society, he is very defensive and very in denial about the control or the ideal of this basso. For example, again, this is someone who is being taught and trained to learn and memorize all of the world's stories and histories. And even though he is seeing the evidence contrary to that fact, he sees this warrior, he's talking to this warrior who he is being told shouldn't exist. When the warrior tries to tell him other things about the world that are in contradiction to what he has learned or been told as this scholar, he cannot comprehend that <laughs> those could also be true. And he really struggles to reconcile the contradictions that are existing within this Basso society. Some of the other perspectives that we get are Danso and Eshame's seconds, which is sort of like a little bit of a bodyguard, a little bit of a servant role. And they are people who are of a lower caste system who live or have um, immigrated to Basso from outside of this world and they are treated extremely differently and have a bit of an indentured servitude kind of a role here. To talk a little bit about the themes in this book, which I've already hinted or mentioned briefly here, definitely the idea of otherness is really significant throughout the book. We have this Basso ideal, the elite, and anything below or different or other than that is treated extremely differently and very much so looked down upon. This is also viewed very differently amongst peoples of those lower caste systems or the people who don't live within the Basso ideal. Some of them see that ideal and want to conform and meet that. And we see this a lot through the eyes of, I think his name was Zach, but Danso's second, he is someone who has immigrated to Basel, who really wants to do all of the things that will get him to a place of a little bit more of a privileged status, but he wants to fit into the Basso ideal. Even though he can clearly see the problems with the Basso ideal, with the Basso government, etc., he still really wants to support or buy into that system. And then we get alternative views of people who want to oppose or take down that system as well. The caste system based on skin tone, based on this ideal, was very well explored, if a little bit repetitively, but I think that the point really, really came across here, the extent to which this is controlling the lives of the people at play. On the note of control, that's another huge theme here. The brainwashing, the propaganda, the control of a society through storytelling is so significant here. And as I mentioned with Danso, there are different times where characters acknowledge and deny the control that has been placed over their lives, the manipulation that has been happening. And while Danso's naivete or defiance when confronted with these issues was really frustrating and enraging at times, it also, I think, was done pretty well at large over the course of the book. 
I can't talk about this book and not talk about the pacing though. And this book, I think that is the biggest takeaway here from my experience reading it and even from reading a lot of other reviews about this book. Something that is pretty consistent is that the pacing and the plot are way too slow and a little bit rambling. I actually thought the beginning of the book was quite exciting. It did a pretty good job of rounding out the world, giving you a sense of like the culture of what Basso was like, who Danso and Eshime were within the first couple chapters of getting a point of view of Danso and Eshime and Zach. Again, I'm not certain on that name, but within the first couple chapters, I had a very clear, distinct sense of who each of these characters were distinct from each other, what their motivations were. I had a really good sense of Basso, of the world. Unfortunately, there's a really long journey story in the middle or like a little bit of a traveling part. There were just a lot of discussions over and over and over again, mostly between Danso and other people in a very repetitive way that wasn't necessary anymore. The point had been made. I personally believe that with the overall tone of this book, with some of the content and the reveals that were made, I think this book should have been a fast paced suspense kind of a story. And instead it was a long, slower discussion, traveling based journey. And I think that the pacing really makes the book feel like it's dragging because at the same time, we're getting a little bit of a rambly plot going on. Before I get into my overall take of the book and the who should and shouldn't read this book, I just wanted to share a couple of the things that like personally really bothered me or that I think were flaws about this book if I haven't made that clear in other areas of these sections. But again, something that really bothered me was that everything comes up heads for a certain character. But this is a character whose head I was excited to be in. I thought they were very interesting and they were obviously very ambitious and very capable. However, as the book progresses, as the plot progresses, the successes and the wins for that character never felt earned because they always felt way too convenient. Every time that this character succeeds and wins, it's kind of luck. So that was something that was a little bit disappointing because it felt like someone who was capable and extremely ambitious and who could have had successes in a very interesting and controversial way, but they never felt earned. I never felt happy or satisfied even with the wins because of how convenient they always seem to be and not based on that character's intelligence or capabilities or hard work. There was definitely a little bit of a convenience to the ending and where our characters leave off and where the next book seems to be going. I've mentioned before that I felt like certain ideas were talked about too much after the author had clearly established and convinced me. There was just an overall feeling of clubbing certain ideas to death with the amount of discussions that took place about it. Again, I think that it would have been better if we had more drama and plot after that fact was already well established. There were just way too many discussions and not enough tension. Now my overall feelings about the book are pretty mixed. Within the first few chapters, I was convinced that this book was a hidden gem. It was doing such a great job of the atmosphere, of the world building, of the culture, vibrancy, and I was piqued. My interest was definitely piqued. The middle section just dragged so much and the plot really meandered and the discussions <laughs> happened too many times that it felt like the book really dragged and lost a lot of focus. I think that this is a prime example of a book that has so much potential, but that just didn't quite nail the execution. And that will leave the reader with either a okay response or hey, this actually worked for me response or a fairly disappointed feeling. I do strongly feel like the pacing of this book was wrong, like that it was a slow paced discussion based book and it should have been a fast paced suspense book with all of the content with, that was there. I am mildly curious to see what the next book is like. I will likely be picking it up, but it won't be a priority read for me or an anticipated release. Now, who should read this book and who shouldn't? I think that this book is going to be a hidden gem for you if you are a thematic based reader. If you don't mind that the execution in other areas is not perfect, if you don't mind a little bit of a meandering plot or a little bit of a slower pace, 
if everything around the edges is just like a little bit rough, as long as you get that great thematic exploration and payoff in that sense, then this book is going to be for you. This is a West African inspired fantasy and the world building and the setting and the atmosphere very much so portrays that. So if you're looking for more non-European fantasy and are a thematic reader, again, I would definitely consider checking this book out. It might work for you. Now, who shouldn't read this book? If you are a plot driven reader, I think that you might struggle with this book just because of the slow pacing and the me slightly meandering plot. I think that if you're someone who's a stickler for execution or who is looking for an extremely deep character dive, then this book might not exclusively be that. I think the characters are well rounded. As I said, they are all distinct people. They have distinct motivations and we do get a look inside their heads. Absolutely. But it isn't the completely immersive character dive that some readers are looking for. Okay, I think that's all that I wanted to say about Son of the Storm today. As I said, I think this could absolutely be a hidden gem for the right reader, but it also might be a pretty big miss or a slightly disappointing read for other readers. If you have already read this book, let me know what you thought of it down below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Or are you interested in picking this book up based on what I said today? Or now, definitely not. <laughs> Let me know. I will see you guys next time. Have a great day. Bye.